Think about it. The stadium noise is slowly rising to a peak, and the cold Berlin air is creating a light shimmer over the track. Everyone is watching the same thing, world-class sprinters settling into their blocks. But in my mind, there was a strange doubt, a detail so subtle that nobody else even noticed it. The race begins. Set! And for a second, the entire stadium freezes. Boom! Gunshot! The athletes burst out like an explosion, and everyone's focus is locked on their speed. But my focus was on something else. Something so subtle that even in slow motion, you might still miss it. Around the 60 meter mark, something felt off, like the frame was slightly off balance. For a microsecond, it felt like the angles weren't lining up perfectly. I wondered, wait, am I imagining this or is something actually off? You know that feeling when you're in the gym, doing squats in front of a mirror and you think your stance is perfect? But a trained coach takes one look and says, your right foot is drifting out a bit. It was exactly that kind of moment. Everything on the track looked perfect, but a trained eye could tell. No, there's a twist here. When the athletes crossed 60 meters, the frame didn't feel smooth. The body angles looked perfect, but the camera movement felt unnatural. Like the perpendicular line had slipped by just one degree. The detail was so tiny that 99% of people ignore it. But in sprinting, the smallest details create the biggest differences. And the craziest part? It was the kind of detail that creates a pressure you can feel. Invisible but powerful. Even I got confused while watching the race. Because when one athlete took a slight lead at 60 meters, the frame didn't show that lead as cleanly as it should have. For a moment, it felt like a time slip. As if the frames came from an angle that distorted the body just a little. And that was the wait, what moment. That micro twist that can change the perception of the entire race. That unseen detail that can hide real speed. And trust me, a, a hidden detail in sprinting is like stepping into a jungle of pure science. Because when angle, lens, and motion aren't perfectly in sync, an invisible gap forms between reality and recording. And that day in Berlin, that's exactly what happened. You only realize things like this when you've gone so deep into biomechanics and race analysis that even a tiny camera slip feels as irritating as a slightly bent spike in your shoe. That was the build-up to part one, that strange, subtle, almost invisible detail that dragged the entire race into a new mystery zone. Now from here, the scene suddenly turns scientific. Because where normal people only see the speed of a race, biomechanics people stay obsessed with one thing, angles. When people hear camera angle, they think the frame is just slightly tilted. But in sprinting, angle means a complete direction change in the physics. Imagine this. You're recording yourself coming out of the sprint blocks with a phone camera. You look perfectly explosive, but if the camera is even two to three degrees off, it looks like you're leaning forward too much, or your acceleration has slowed down. The reality is the same, but the recording tells a completely different story. That's exactly what happened in the Berlin Ring. The static cameras captured the 60 meter mark from an angle that slipped slightly from the ideal 90 degrees. A micro deviation. But that tiny deviation created an invisible distortion in the timing. To understand this, think of a mini demo. If you look at a straight line from the front, it looks perfect, but move 10 degrees to the side. The same line looks slightly longer or slightly behind. In sprinting, this geometric illusion impacts timing the same way. And all of this is proven with 10 page formulas. Frame rate times lens, distortion times angle offset equals measurable error. And the most surprising part, the error was so subtle that manual time sync didn't catch it. Laser timings, camera timestamps, and frame tracking were all missing each other by microseconds. Now understand this from a sprint biomechanics angle. When an athlete is in the acceleration phase, force transfers from ground to ankle to knee to hip to spine to arm. If the camera angle slips even slightly, it looks as if stride frequency is increasing, but force is decreasing. In reality, the force is perfect, but visual distortion makes the frame interpret it differently. And when timestamps don't sync, a recording can show an athlete's real speed as slightly early or slightly late. This tiny shift, 0.01 or 0.02 seconds, is nothing in normal life, but in sprinting, it's the difference between first and fourth place. It's a value where it's not just the difference that changes, the destiny changes. Take a training analogy. 
If your hip angle is one inch higher when settling in the blocks, or your first step lands two centimeters behind, your entire acceleration chain gets disrupted. A tiny mistake, massive impact. Same thing here, a tiny angle error, a massive reality shift. And this microscopic shift created a data distortion in the Berlin race. A distortion that experts believed to be true for years. But deeper analysis revealed the entire picture at 60 million was wrong. And now from here, the story finally takes a twist. Now the picture is becoming clear. That tiny camera angle error completely misled the real-time perception. Officials looked at the timing sheets and assumed everything was correct because the 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters, and finish line cameras were perfectly aligned. Only the 60 meters camera was slightly off. And the athletes? They could feel their real-time velocity, but the visual and recorded data didn't match. For a microsecond, it looked like they were slowing their acceleration, while in reality they were giving peak effort. This is exactly the point coaches need to understand. Small measurement errors equals big perception trap. If you rely only on video analysis and training and ignore angles, you will always underestimate your sprinter's true performance. Simple rule, always combine laser-based timing plus multiple camera angles plus real athlete feedback. Only then you'll get the full picture of the actual start and acceleration. And honestly, I used to fall into the same trap. I used to think that if the start looked perfect, the athlete must be the fastest. But when I combined proper data analysis plus laser splits plus on-track feel, my entire thinking flipped. Now I analyze every sprinter's 60-meter dynamics first, and only then calculate the accurate top speed trajectory. And here's the most interesting part. This micro-study isn't just for past races. If you apply this in training, you can uncover the hidden potential of your athletes. Just a small adjustment, angle correction, timing verification, and stride feedback integration. And the final twist? The 60 meter split that was initially measured wrong was actually 6.29, meaning Su Bing Tian was tied with Usain Bolt's legendary opening 60. And this is proof that the hidden GOAT level of start plus acceleration is what truly defines record breakers. So the next time you watch a race or record your own training, remember one thing, expectation versus reality at every split isn't just about numbers. It's a combination of physics plus biomechanics. And if you want me to do a deep dive into the advanced version of this, then I just type next.